Greetings from Brother Stephen. I'm a disciple and witness of Jesus Christ to all the inhabitants of the earth. I present to you as a witness this gospel of the kingdom. In this lesson today, titled Adam Cursed, we're going to be going over Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 20. 17 through 20. <clears throat> and like always, we're going to read in the King James Version, Oxford edition of 1769 which is a false translation of the Bible. And it is what all Bibles in America are pretty much translated from. Any Bible you have with the letter J in it is a false translation. And again, so we're going to read verses 17 to 20. Then we're going to get to my translation and explaining the this subsection of scriptures as we go through them again. It says, and unto... Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife named Eve, because she was the mother of all living. So now we're back at Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 20. We're going to read this in the Lord Stephan version, which is, I've been working on this translation. I've been working on it for the last three years. We kind of updated the book of Genesis this year. So again at verse 17, and unto Adam he said, because you have listened unto the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree. Now the tree that is referring to, you just have to go back to Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and we go over this in detail in a study titled tree of knowledge when you get to first timothy chapter 2 verse 14 it says and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression the serpent or the cash did not deceive the man he deceived the woman and the woman took it unto the man and the man ate it willingly, not being deceived because of his wife, because he loved his wife. So again, and have eaten of the tree, that tree is the tree of technology, of which I commanded you saying, ye shall not eat of it. So again, just going back over when Elohim gave him that commandment, this is Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. It says, And Jehovah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of the tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge, or the, this is the tree of technology. The tree of technology of good and evil. It, the technology means scientific knowledge ye shall not eat of it for in the day ye eat thereof you shall surely die so elohim gave him a command and the consequences of breaking that command is death the tree of technology death did not come from the tree of technology scientific knowledge came from the tree of technology death came from god because man disobeyed him when you go to Romans chapter 6, verses 23, it says for the consequences or the King James Version Bible used the term wage or the penalty for sin. Sin is violating God's commandment. If God didn't give a commandment, it's not a sin. That's why the scriptures say where there's no law, where there's no commandment from God, there is no transgression. God specifically has to make it a sin. So again, for the consequences of disobeying the commandments of God is death. 
Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 through 7 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the tree thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the brains, this means their understanding, to understand scientific knowledge. It says, of them both were open. One of the things I want to point out in this lesson, if you notice, their understanding was not open. Neither um, did they die or was cursed to die until Adam specifically ate. So their eyes was not open or their brains was not open to understand this knowledge until Adam himself specifically ate of that tree. It says, and they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves tie leaf skirts. And again, that was like those Hawaiian skirts. They, they just didn't cover themselves with leaves in any reckless type of form. They, what they did was artistic and it was an invention. They invented um, clothing for themselves. So now we're back at Genesis chapter 3. Again, verses 17 to 20, read through my translation. And unto Adam, he said, because you have listened unto the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, ye shall not eat of it. He said, cursed is the ground because of you. So Elohim cursed the ground also because of Adam's disobedience. It says, in sorrow shall ye eat of it all the days of your life. So when Elohim cursed the ground, if you go back to Numbers chapter 13, verses 17 through 23, and we go over this in the study titled, The Planting of the Garden, that everything back then was giant. Even the trees, the fruit, the animals, this was when God created dinosaurs, everything was giant. And we mentioned this scripture to prove it. Um, that even fruit and trees was giant. When you go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 23, it says, And they came out of the brook of a scroll and cut down um, from hence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. So basically, the cluster of grapes was so big that two men had to carry it. You got a cluster of grapes almost as tall as an average size man. So when Elohim cursed the ground, this when he began to destroy that age, that gigantic age, that age of the dinosaurs. Because if the he's cursing the ground, the food that everybody was eating, what are all these giant beings and creatures going to eat if the ground is cursed? So this does not only affect Adam, but it uh, dom, but it affects all living creatures. And this is when the extension, the extinction of dinosaurs began. When you go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 to 7, when the cash or the serpent is cast out of heaven, it says, And Jehovah Elohim said unto the cash, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every dinosaur of the field. So not only did Elohim curse the ground. He cursed all livestock and all dinosaurs. He cursed all life. And again, this is when the beginning of the extension, the extinction of dinosaurs began. And um, again, we go over everything I just mentioned, we go over in previous lessons. So when you get to Genesis chapter 8, verses 21, and I'm just going over now, when did Elohim uncurse the ground. So when you go to Genesis chapter 8 verses 20 through 21, um, nope, actually we kind of going back. Let me scroll back up here. I kind of missed the point here. When the reasons all cattle and dinosaurs was cursed, because you have to remember when the cash was cast into the heaven, he was turned unto parasites and maggots and flies. And because he was turned into parasites, maggots, and flies, he was cursed. And the scripture says, unto, um, on your belly ye shall go, and flesh shall you eat all the days of your life. Now, this is just not talking about human flesh, 
but it is also talking about animal flesh, whether it is living flesh or dead flesh that Satan is going to eat them. So again, this is the beginning of the extinction of dinosaurs. You have animals curse because um, Satan is going to be passing on deadly diseases and parasites. The ground is cursed, so they don't have the nutrition that they was once getting before. And when you go to Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 through 21, it says, And Noah, Noah built it an altar unto Jehovah. This is after the flood. And took of every clean animal and of every clean bird. So what does this clean animal and clean bird mean? So you can understand that. We're going to jump to Leviticus chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. It says, And Jehovah spake unto Moshe and that had on, saying to them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the animals which you shall eat among the animals that are on the earth. Whatsoever part the hoof and is cloven footed. So basically, I have a cloven footed animal. So you can see that means their um, toes is completely divided and cheweth their vomit among the animals that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew their vomit, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because the camel chew his vomit, but divide not the hoof. When they say chew his vomit, a lot of animals will eat food, and it goes into the stomach, then some of that partially digested food goes back up to the mouth, and the animal chew on that vomit, like a camel. But divide not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So the camel is unclean. Now, another thing I want to point out, it says the camel divide not the hoof. And this is the bottom of a camel's foot. As you can see, it is not completely divided. So it says, although his hoof is not cloven footed or completely divided, he chewed his vomit. So he is unclean. It says, and the rabbit, because he chewed his vomit. But divide not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, hare is like a larger rabbit, because he chew his vomit. But divide not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So anything that is um, cloven footed or chew on its vomit is unclean. It says, and the pig, though he divide not the hoof, I mean his, his feet is not, toes is not completely divided. Yet he chew his vomit. He is unclean unto you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. And there's that term, unclean. And of their flesh shall ye not eat. And their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean unto you. Now, when you go back to one of the previous lessons, the reason these animals are unclean is because of parasites and parasitic diseases. Because Satan was turned into parasites. And these particular animals is more prone to parasites and parasitic diseases than other animals are. And that is why they was considered unclean. Um, and if we, and again, if you go back to the study we did of when the cash was cast out of heaven, we talked about how Christ, when he cast those pigs into the ocean or he cast the demons or the parasites out of the men that was possessed with them into a herd of pigs then that herd of pigs fell violently over a cliff down into the sea and drowned it was because those pigs was infested with parasitic diseases and parasitic uh, parasites um so another thing I just have here, and I'll try to blow this up for you real quick so you just understand this is about the pig. A pig has the ability to where it is ingesting these diseases and these parasites. As you can see, this comes from a pig. A pig might eat bird poop and end up with a different type of parasite, and then it might end up with a different type of parasite even from human droppings. What a pig is able to do is take all these strands and mutate them into a new strand. A lot of diseases come from these unclean animals who mutate 
these parasites and these diseases and these mutations. And, and if we eat that meat, that unclean meat, that's that meat, as you can see, it's got like a maggot up there re representing being unclean. Once we eat that, those parasitic diseases and parasites end up in our body. It ends up in our intestines. It, it can end up in our heart, end up in our tissue. And that is why these animals are unclean. Now, another thing I want to talk about, and we're going to get into a little bit of this scientific knowledge, that once Adam and Kava ate from the tree of technology, these, this is the type of knowledge that is open up to us now. And I want to explain, one of the things I want to explain is how parasites are able to mutate um, human DNA. So basically what man, the DNA in a human man is made up of, it is called a um, nucleoside. And there's basically four different kinds. Um, we just call these A, T, C, and G. And that's kind of represented here. Now, these um, nucleosides, as they bond, they eventually form DNA. As DNA continue to bond, they form long strands of um, basically genes or genomes. Now, within those genes, they wrap around proteins. And um, there's all different types of proteins throughout our body depending on its function. But the, you basically have DNA wrapped around proteins. Now, this DNA that's wrapped around proteins is wrapped around what we call chromosomes. These chromosomes are, it forms a nucleus. These nucleuses is what form cells. Cells is what form our tissue, our flesh, whether it's muscle, nerves, or meat, um, skin, it comes from cells. And then eventually, these, this tissue that is formed is what organs come from. We have basically the organs, which is our heart, intestines, liver, and so on. Our brain is one of those organs. Our nervous system is connected to our brain. All of our veins is connected to the, our heart organ. So this is basically an organ. All the veins in your body is connected to the heart. That's an organ. All of your nerves are connected to your brain. This is your nervous system. It is an organ. The bone structure that we have is an organ. And then the flesh that cover us all up to make us look pretty on the outside, our skin is an organ. Now, to go back to chromosomes, all people have 23 chromosomes in their bodies. And again, these chromosomes that we have in our body, they reproduce themselves over and over again. Every last cell in our body is a, is a copy or reproduction of the same 23 chromosomes. Um, so again, just to make sure I'm explaining it right, every cell in your body has the exact same 23 chromosomes. They match each other within every cell. <clears throat> now, and again, these, so these are, these are chromosomes. Chromosomes is what make up cells. We get our chromosomes. This purple represents the chromosomes that come from our father. The blue represents the chromosome that come from our mother. We get one from our father, one from our mother, or from the sperm cell and from the um, woman's ovary. That's where we get um, the chromosomes from, one from the male, one from the female. Now, these chromosomes, I'm going to scroll back up here. There are basically two chromosomes next to each other. And again, that's what this represents, those chromosomes. Those chromosomes, when you infect it with parasitic diseases and parasites, and including, the, and including microscopic parasites like these, HIV, hepatitis B, 
These are demons. These come from parasites. They're parasitic diseases and viruses that come from parasites that come from flies. Now, there's, um, and again, these parasites and these parasitic diseases, they attack your DNA and your chromosomes and can cause mutations within those chromosomes. There's two major chromosome mutations, and I have them here. One is insertion. So these are those two, these are the two chromosomes. Now, an insertion is when a piece of your chromo inherent chromosome that comes from your father ends up in that chromosome that comes from your mother. This is an insertion. It takes a piece of this chromosome and it transfers it over in the chromosome that comes from your mother. That's insertion. The other one is translocation. And as you can see here, it um, basically switches a piece of the chromosome from the male to the female and from the female to the male. So it, it swipes a piece of the chromosome. And, it, and, this, and our bodies wasn't designed for this. This is what happened when we were um, just from parasitic diseases, mutations, and um, so on. Now, there's three major single chromosome mutations, and that's deletion, duplication, and inversion. And I basically have here a deletion, and these are single chromosomes. This is double chromosomes, and the double chromosomes represents these 23 double chromosomes. The single chromosome just represent a single chromosome, not the doubles. And so again, the three major single chromosome mutations is deletion, and this means a piece of that information that is just deleted. This is why some people might be born without a leg, without eyes, without a tongue, can't speak. Then the other one is duplication. So it takes a piece of that chromosome and it duplicates it. And this is why people are born with extra body parts and other problems, not just extra body parts, but anything can happen when you have a mutation in your chromosomes. And then we have what is called an inversion. And an inversion is when that piece of chromosome is inverted upside down. Now, these mutations originally occur by flies, maggots, and parasitic diseases, but they can be passed down. So for instance, a, a man and a woman have a child, they have a mutation, a child can end up with that mutation from the man's sperm or from the woman ovaries. They don't necessarily have to have a parasite. And um, the other way it can form is just a woman get pregnant and during that pregnancy, she becomes sick and it causes a mutation in her um, DNA um, or within that um, fetus. So now we're back to, I want to jump to Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, because we're still talking about now when, um, again, when we scroll back up, we're talking about when uh, Satan was cursed and cast into the earth and turned into parasites and parasitic diseases and how it affects all living creatures um, and their, pretty much their um, biological makeup their DNA, their muscles, their chromosomes, their nucleus, their cells. So again, in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, verse 14 said, Upon your belly shall ye go. This is referring to Nakash, the serpent, when he was cast out of heaven. And flesh shall ye eat all the days of your life. This is living flesh and dead flesh. So basically, what Satan was turned into was a fly. And even the house fly alone, if you do any type of research, you will find that it is responsible for over 65 diseases. So while death comes from disobeying Elohim's command, scientific knowledge comes from the tree of technology of good and evil, and sickness and disease come from 
nakash, flies and maggots and parasites. So the Bible literally gives you the origin of everything that we're dealing with to this very day. From here, I want to jump to Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 and 21. It says, And Noah built an altar unto Jehovah, and took of every parasite free animal before it we had clean. And clean means it's parasite free. And of every parasite free bird. And he offered a burnt offering unto the altar. And Jehovah smelled a sweet odor. And Jehovah said, in his heart, I will not again curse the ground um, any more for man's sake. So God did not uncurse the ground until after the flood. So basically, I have a little map here to demonstrate that as a visual. So from the time Adam sinned until after the flood, the ground was cursed. People was people and animals was not receiving the same nutrition and food that they was receiving for the first sixteen thousand years, and so again, this is what one of the major factors that caused the extension of the guy, what we call the gigantic age or the dinosaur age, because for about what is this from Adam to the, about after the flood is probably around a thousand. 700 years the ground was cursed and again resulting one of the things that resulted into the, in the extinction of dinosaurs now it says for the imaginations of man heart is evil from his youth neither will I again smite any more everything living so the scriptures let you know pretty much how dinosaurs became extinct it is when Adam um, fail. Not only did Adam fall, but he caused that entire everything that existed on the face of the earth at that time to be cursed. Animals, dinosaurs was plagued with flies and diseases. So they sicknesses killed them off. They didn't have food to eat. Starvation killed them off. And then Elohim finished pretty much wiping them out with a flood. And this is the why how dinosaurs became extinct um when you go to second peter chapter 2 verse 5 it read again god if god spared not the old world again that dinosaur world but save noah and eight persons a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly so the extinctions of dinosaurs was caused by God. And uh, I believe science teach it was a asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs or an ice age. And again, the reason, just to prove how you know that dinosaurs was not wiped out by a meteorite, is that if dinosaurs was wiped out by a meteorite or a meteorite caused the extinction of dinosaurs, we would not ha have dinosaur fossils today like this when you read in the bible when meteors hit the earth like for instance sodom and Gomorrah, it says his wife was turned into a pillar of salt her bones didn't even remain and this is the same thing with like a nuclear bomb when they dropped a nuclear bomb over hashima those people was turned to what they call nuclear shadows pillars of salt only their shadows was remained on the ground. So if, dino, if a meteorite or something like that would have caused, we would not have had dinosaur bones perfectly um, fossilized like this. Um, at the least, they'd be scattered out in a billion different pieces in a range that's so far from each other that we couldn't even imagine. But like this is how we know, again, that uh, an asteroid did not, but it was just sickness, disease, starvation, and then a flood. And again, these are just a few images to show you, you know, this is just basically proof that these animals, when they died off, had to die off again, sickness, disease, and the flood. Verse 18 says, storms and thistles, shall it bring forth to you. This is after 
um, Elohim just said that the ground is going to be cursed. He's now telling Adam, thorns and thistles shall it bring up to you. When you go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 7, it says, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. So I'm only using that verse here again to demonstrate how these thorns and thistles that's going to bring that come forth, it kind of choked the life out of um, that perfect world and those perfect fruits and stuff like that. It says, And you, referring to Adam, shall eat of the herb of the field now the reason he's saying he shall eat of the herb of the field there's a couple different things you can learn from this part of the verse the first thing was again fruit that sweet fruit that mankind was normally eating in the beginning was cursed or it was gone they didn't have access to that fruit anymore so they start eating herbs one thing is about herb, herbs are not sweet. Herbs are considered bitter. And I have two verses here to prove that. That's Exodus 12 and 8 and Numbers 9 and 11. It says, and they shall eat of the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. Herbs are not sweet like fruits or even like vegetables. They shall eat it. And then again, in Numbers 9 and 11, it refers to herbs as being bitter. Now, when you go look up the definition of herb, it says any plant with leaves, seeds, or flowers used for flowering. So herbs is just that the leaves, the greens. And then it says herbs can be used for food, for medicine, or perfume. So even one of the reasons Elohim is telling him, and he shall eat of the herb of the field, it is because mankind has now entered into this age of sickness and disease, which is caused by Satan falling from the heavens. Herbs is a medicine to the body. It helps heal diseases. When you go to Psalms 104.14, it says he causes the grass to grow for the livestock. Keep them good and healthy. It's almost like eating grass-fed beef versus corn-fed beef. It says, an herb for the service of man. This means to heal man. It is a medicine that he may bring forth food out of the earth. When you go to Ezekiel 47 and 12, it says, and by the river upon the bank thereof, on the side, and that side shall grow all trees for food whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his month, because their waters, because their waters they issue out of the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for food, and the leaf, that's that green herb. Go back up. Any plant with leaves. So again, and the herb. A uh, herb is almost anything dark green. Um, although it's say a flower, so any like, a, 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 for instance, a rose bush, whatever color the flower on the rose might be, those are also considered herbs. But mostly here we're just talking about them green herbs. It says there for, for medicine. It is to heal the body. So if you're really sick and diseased, the cure probably for almost every sickness and disease is given right to us in the scripture. It's herbs. Eat a lot of herbs. You don't need man-made medicine. You need the medicine that God gave us, and that is herbs. When you go to Revelations 22 and 2, it says the same thing, but it's, uh, again, talking about the same tree in Ezekiel. It says in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there, let's go back here, the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves, the herb of the tree, were, were for the healing of the nations. So what do we need to start healing ourselves? Just herbs. When you go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 20, Again, we're in my translation. We're at verse 19. 
Um, this is again when Adam is being cursed. He says, in the sweat of your face shall ye eat. In other words, hard work, hard labor, just to grow food. Till you return to the Adamwa. Now, all Adamwa means is the red soils um, of Egypt where Adam or Adam was created. So, again, we're going to jump back to Genesis chapter 8, verses 21, where it says, And Noah built an altar unto Jehovah, and took of every parasite free animal, and of every parasite free bird, and of every and offered burnt offerings on the altar, and Jehovah smelled a sweet odor. Uh, and look, one again, the reason he smelled that sweet odor is because it's parasite free. And it is going up into the air. And Jehovah said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. So the main thing I want to point out here is that Elohim told Adam that the ground is going to be cursed until he's died. God does not uncurse the ground until after the flood. And Adam has been long gone, so pretty much God keeps his promise. He cursed the ground for the rest of Adam's entire life, plus some. Um, verse 19, again, in the sweat of the faith, in the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return unto the Adamwa, which is the red soil, for out of it was you taken. So from here, if you go to Ch Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then Jehovah Elohim pottered. Adam from the dust of the Adamwa. And again, Adamwa means red soil. Adam gets his name from the Adamwa, which is the soil he was pottered from. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life is nothing but air. It is hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. So this represents man being created from the Adamwa. He's pottered from the Adamwa. Elohim takes air, breathe it into the nostrils of man. And man becomes a living nephish. Now, basically, even all of our DNA, what it is made up of, it is our DNA is hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. Now, when it says it breathed into his nostrils, and go back so you can understand what happened when he breathed into man's nostrils. He breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, which is air, and that air began to turn a non-living organism into a living organism. That dirt began to turn into uh, nucleosides. Then the nucleosides start turning to DNA. That DNA start turning into long strings of what we call genes. Then those genes start wrapping this created protons, start wrapping themselves around protons, and then wrapping themselves around chromosomes. Chromosomes turn into nucleuses, nucleuses turned into cells, cells turned into bone, bone, from bone, muscle, muscle, veins, nervous system, then from there, um, you know, flesh, and again, it created organs, literally from the ground, from the dust, it turned it into organs, bone, and then eventually wrapped everything in skin. Now, man don't particularly possess that type of knowledge, but God does. But it's just a knowledge that God possess and we do not possess. And then it says, and the, for dust you are, and unto dust shall you return. And again, it's just referring to decomposing or decomposition. He's going to turn back to dust. That body is going to decompose. Now, we get to Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 again. It says, and Jehovah Elohim said unto the cast, because you have done this, you are cursed above all living stock and above every dinosaur of the field. Upon your belly shall you go. He turns that beautiful red dragon to a fly. 
flies lays eggs on flesh, especially dead flesh. It doesn't have to be dead flesh, but most definitely dead flesh. Those eggs turn into larvae or maggots. Then those maggots is what eats the tissue to reproduce more flies. And as you can see here, each fly lays about six to nine hundred eggs. So um, flies produce in abundance. Then the scripture says, and dust shall you eat. This dust is referring to tissue. The tissue that was created from the dust of the ground. And again, we're going to scroll back up to this picture. That tissue is organs. It is um, muscle. It is skin tissue. It's your blood, your even urine and feces. So again, and I have the definition of tissue here. It's any of the distinct types of materials of which animals or plants are made consisting of specialized cells and their products. And again, uh, one of those things that you can see here is flesh. So now we have Job chapter 19, verse 26. It reads, And though after my skin, worms destroy this body, this means maggots, parasites, larvae. This is the serpent, the cast, just what he was cursed and turned into. It destroys means eat this body. Yet my flesh Yet in my flesh shall I see God. And of course, that is refer see Elohim. And of course, that is referring to the resurrection. John 10 and 10 says, The thief, talking about Nakash, that serpent, cometh not but to steal your body and kill your body with diseases. We're going to age. But Satan kills us even faster than that with diseases, with parasites and parasitic diseases. And to destroy, this means eat you. Job 21, 26, they shall lie down alike in the dust. And the worms, this dust, they're going to be decomposing. They're dead. And maggots, parasites, larvae shall cover them. And, was, and again, these worms is what Satan, when he fell out of heaven and cursed, this is what he became. Isaiah 59, behold, Jehovah will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old. Age. Age is the consequence of disobeying God. Age brings about death. They shall all wax old. Age as a garment. The moth. And again, the moth is just referring to those flies that um, leave eggs on their corpses. And it shall eat them up. So you got decomposing. Um, and being consumed by um, insects. Isaiah 51 and 8. For the moth, talking about the fly, shall eat them like a garment. How moth, how we call moths today, how they eat clothes. A fly is going to eat your body like a moth eat clothes. And the larva shall eat them like wool. Same thing, like clothing. The law, look, the larva shall eat them. Um, so we're back at verse 20. And it says, And Adam called his wife's name Kava because she was the mother of all living. We covered Kava names in the lesson titled um, Kava Curse and the Age of the Gemini. So I'll just try to go through this really briefly. As you can see, um, if you look up Eve on Blue Letter Bible and open up the Strong's Concordance, Eve name is translated from Hebrew reference number 2332. If you was to click on this 2332, the next image that's going to pop up on your screen is this. As you can see, that is that Hebrew reference number 2332. And this is the name Eve was translated from. But you pronounce this Kava, not Eve. Eve actually comes from the Greek. The um, Greek translation of Kava is Eve. And that's where we get our translation from. But when you're translating the Old Testament, you should be translating it as Kava because these names have meanings. So now we're just doing a, 
um, studying the etymology of Kava's name because it is a noun and it comes from the verb Kava which is that Hebrew reference number 2331 there's that 2331 this is Kava also um, this is a noun this is a verb so when you look up how this verb Kava is used in scripture as you can see it occurs six times in six verses in the Hebrew concordance and it is translated as show. So Kava name means to show. And when you look up the definition of show, it's cause to be visible. And the reason her name is Kava, um, and if you notice, she was not given the name Kava till after she caused their eyes to be open. Um, when you go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And when Kava saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. She caused um, their eyes to be open, and that is where her names come from. And they seen that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves tie leaf skirts. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and it's pretty much in this lesson, man is made up of two parts. And those main two parts that he's made up of he is the dirt, dust from the ground, which is a non living organism, and from air, which is hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. These are the main two parts of man if you wanted to get even deeper you can break down the substances of soil and even probably break down these substances a little further but we only going with soil the dust of the ground and the breath of life now when you go to ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 it says then shall we dust return to the earth your bodies shall return to dirt as it was from the beginning and the spirit that again, that spirit is hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, phosphite. It's that breath of life that he breathed into Adam. So that breath, that breath of air, shall return unto Elohim who gave it. Now, when you go to Job chapter 34, 14, it says, If he set his heart upon man, if he take back unto himself his air, and his breath all flesh all nephesh everything he created from the dust of the ground and put air into their lungs and into their bodies turn them into living creatures it say shall perish together and man shall return again unto the dust or ground and with that being said this concludes this gospel